Miko Pellet is an Israeli American peace activist and author, born in Jerusalem in 1961. Pellet grew up in Modza Elit to a prominent Zionist family. His grandfather, Avraham Katz Nelson, signed Israel's Declaration of Independence. His father, Matiyahu Pellet, was a well known public figure and a celebrated war hero. He fought in the 1947 to 1949 Palestine War and served as a general in the Six Day War of 1967. He was an Israeli war hero who became a friend, ally, and staunch advocate of Palestinian Arabs who called him Abu Salam or Father of Peace. Today, exactly 54 years ago today, the Israeli army received a green light from the government to go ahead and begin an assault against uh, Egypt first. This green light from the Israeli government came after many weeks when the Israeli High Command, the Israeli Military High Command was pushing and demanding to start a war. June the 5th, 1967, around 300 Israeli aircraft, mainly French-built fighter bombers, prepared to launch the most decisive airstrike in history. Their target, the air forces of Egypt, Syria and Jordan. My father was a general, he was a member of the Israeli High Command at that time. In my book, in this book, in The General Sun, I actually have the actual minutes from the meetings of these generals explaining why they wanted the war. Matiyahu Pellet was among a group of generals who demanded that the government start a war and threatened to resign if it did not. Some historians credit the general's protest with a decisive role in Israel's making the decision to launch the Six-Day War. A crucial turning point in the history of the country and of the entire Middle East to the present day. It wasn't because there was a uh, threat. It wasn't because Israel was being threatened or Jewish people were being threatened. They wanted the war because they saw an opportunity. And they began a massive assault against Egypt. And when that went very well, they decided they would take the West Bank and the Gaza Strip and the Golan Heights, which were areas they wanted to take anyway, they were planning to do anyway. This was a massive assault by Israel against its Arab neighbors because they wanted to destroy their military and because they wanted the land. And within six days it was over. And then what they did was they perpetuated this myth, which we even hear today. People talk about that even today as though it's true, that Israel was under an existential threat, that the Arab armies were ready to come and kill and destroy. And none of that was true. In the very meetings of the generals of the Israeli high command, which, like I said, included my father, they were talking about an opportunity to attack because the Arab armies were not prepared for war. They say this. The Arab armies were not prepared for war. That's why we need to attack right now. My father himself says in one point, the Egyptian army, which was the biggest, would need at least a year and a half or two years before it would be ready for war. The word opportunity comes up many times in their discussions. The word threat never comes up, except that they said we need to perpetuate the story that there's a threat. 
as a means to pressure public opinion and pressure the government to give the green light, and that's what happened. People were scared, the government was pressured, and they got the green light, and in five days it was over. They call it the Six Day War because there's a biblical connection. The world was created in six days. So in Jewish prayer, the six days comes up a lot, the six days of creation. And so they pick the Six Day War. But it's incredible that the lies that they perpetuated 54 years ago about an existential threat, even though those lies have been shown to be lies, not just by me, people before me and people after me and people, you know, other Israeli generals stood up and said later on it was a lie, but it sticks. And this image of these poor Israelis being threatened is something that is continuing to this day. And it was a lie then, and it's a lie today. The conflict itself may have lasted only six days. This only place safe from Israeli bombs. But the occupation that followed is now entering its sixth it's decade. They move from house to house. The longest military bombs. occupation night, in the world. The Israeli military bombarded Shujaia. It struck homes, cars, more civilians. Aharon Zisling, Israel's first agriculture minister and a signatory of Israel's Declaration of Independence on the occupation of Palestinians, said, I couldn't sleep all night. I felt that things that were going on were hurting my soul, the soul of my family and all of us here. Now, Jews do have behaved like Nazis, and my entire being has been shaken. <laughs>